on BBC Radio London. Uh, and I'm really, really delighted to have what I would say is Bollywood royalty in the studio. She's here for a very special uh, event. It actually took place last week at the Houses of Parliament. A lot of people have been buzzing about this. Is finally, a decade later, the Asian Standard London has been launched by RF Media and Publishing. And I'm also joined by the editor and actually I would say the bright the brains behind the whole machine when it comes to Asian Standard London. We have Fatima Patel in the studio and attending the event. She's been very supportive, not just only of the paper, but also herself has received a lot of accolades and recognition. It is the fantastic Bollywood star, or I should say uh, Hindi cinema star, Manisha Garayla. Manisha and Fatima, pleasure to have you both here. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Pleasure is all mine. Absolutely. I, 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 I have to start off firstly with yourself, if I can, Fatima. This has been a decade in the making in terms of from conception back in 2013. I know you and I and Sunny spoke extensively about this paper. Just put into context for our listeners why it was important for you to finally be able to launch Asian Standard London and really to have a focus on London. I mean, you've you've seen the journey uh, yourself and, and Sunny, uh, Shay, and I'm, I'm really grateful to all the support that you guys have given me over the years. Um, I think it was very, very important because obviously the dream that I saw 10 years ago um, wasn't fulfilled due to a setback with health issues, Yes, um, as you know. Um, and I think it was um, uh, really uh, important for me to get myself back up from that health challenge, mainly because so many people didn't give up on me sure. while I was ill and mainly obviously mum and dad um, yourselves yeah. um, and, and people even now you know when you come 10 years later I thought that maybe somebody else will have done it you know there, there's loads of other newspapers but nobody's really still talking about the issues that impact us British Asians yeah. and so I thought that the dream that I had 10 years ago it's, it's still not been fulfilled by anybody um, so two reasons firstly to make sure that I give back to the people that helped nurture me back yes. to good health yes um, and to then finish that dream that started 10 years ago and also now when you get such challenges your purpose changes sure. so my drive to have this paper has doubled because now my purpose is even more having gone through challenges myself, yeah. having a story of my own, it makes it even more purposeful now to be able to tell everybody else's story. I was quite touched by what you said at the, the London edition launch, as I mentioned, at the House of Parliament, in which you said the newspaper is not just a celebration of diversity, it's a testament to our shared dreams and collective aspirations. It's the focus here for you to really highlight uh, what South Asian Londoners are achieving because oftentimes we hear the negatives in the news don't we especially if you're a brown person um, it, it's not necessarily the case that in London we'll get to find out about the key achievements and sometimes we can be in an echo chamber we might say it to our own selves our families our communities but to be on a mainstream platform like today on BBC Radio London this is about shining a light on the community on a mainstream level. Would you agree with that? Absolutely, absolutely. I think there's, there's so many untold stories. And you're right, I mean, I don't live in London and I look at London from an outside lens. I sure. live in Yorkshire. Yes. And you're right, you don't see the <laughs> I positives. I can hear it in the accent. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to hear plenty more of the Yorkshire accent. But, you know, you, you read, uh, I'm reading, I'm sat in Yorkshire reading yeah. up about what's going on in London. And you're right, it is negative. And I know so many people like yourself, Shay, yeah. um, who are doing amazing things. And I'm thinking, well, where are the stories? Why well, aren't we talking about the, the people? There's more than a million South Asians in London compared to the 150,000 that I focus on in Bradford. Got you. So you're shining that light. And I have yeah. to bring in Manisha at this point. You've been waiting very patiently. Manisha, you know, for our listeners, just to set some context, I mean, I mentioned this earlier to the team that uh, I'm a huge fan, I should say, firstly. I'm a third-generation Londoner, uh, and as such, my connection to Indian cinema was through actors like yourself. Um, and to give that comparative, I would say, before you did take a break, and you've been very vocal and open about your cancer journey, um, you know, you, for me, in the Western world, would be the equivalent of, let's say, a Julia Roberts, just for the context of our listeners, in terms of the filmmaking, the gravitas that you bring to screen, 
what has that journey been like for you? Because I know London's always had quite a relationship with you, or you've had quite a relationship with London. Mm -hmm. So what is it like for you to be back supporting this paper, being at the Houses of Parliament with the launch, which everyone's been talking about? Just just give us some context around that, so Manisha. It's, it's, it's been, uh, when Fatima invited me for this, I really, you know, uh, was so, so keen to come, A, eh? It's been far too long that I've been missing London. Yeah. And and B, you know, I admire Fatima for her journey and and her spirit, her soul. And, you know, so her story is very inspiring, very similar to mine. And and so I was really wanting to be here and, you know, somehow everything got uh, this thing. Yeah. My cancer journey, her struggle with health mm -hmm. and her bouncing back uh into her work with the purpose with a bigger purpose yes um and my after my cancer as well you know doing better films yes uh, and not only films uh, um, realizing how important role is of contribution to the society you know being a celebrity being a known person you know um your purpose in life becomes bigger mm -hmm. And more meaningful, you know. Um, so, all those things I learned during my cancer period, and then I could see someone like Fatima, and and it's been a more wonderful experience in House of Parliament. That was my first. <laughs> I was totally enamored because I used to watch House of Commons quite a lot yeah. of the, the the debates with shows on television and stuff like that, and the terrace and everything. So, it's been I've been. I must say it was very glamorous for me. <laughs> well, I mean, that's quite something to hear from, from yourself, who I think epitomizes glamour, <laughs> glitz and glamour for sure. Manisha, you just mentioned there that, you know, you, you've missed London. You've been really open, and I know in the in the paper, um, which I'll speak to Fatima about in a moment, but you talk a lot about your personal journey. You um, actually did open up early on mm -hmm. with regards to your cancer diagnosis. Mm -hmm. That's been seen as quite an inspirational thing to do because if we were to focus for a moment on South Asian women, mm -hmm. uh, even if the diagnosis is there, we do have this kind of cultural aspect where people say, well, don't talk about it. Let's just deal with it and then we'll move on. And here you were on a very public platform and still are mm -hmm. inspiring women to say, look, this is part of our lives and we need to be able to support each other and talk about it. How has that been for you? Absolutely. You're so right. The thing is, you know, when I had the diagnosis, I was looking for some news. I was looking for information and there was not too much of information out there. So I had actually made a promise to myself that if I ever get a chance, I would be speaking out loud. And I would be encouraging people because it's a cathartic, it's, it's, you know, it's a healing process to share your story to, and to be honest about it. So I came out with a book, yes, you know, called Healed. And, and, and that the sole purpose of telling that story is to encourage people and also telling other people like caretakers, caregivers, you know, uh, caregivers, how to, what does a patient feel during that time? Because... My family members were not aware. Nobody's yeah. trained, you know. Um, so all of us were struggling. So I thought it could really shed a light on to the patient's journey, mm. as well as form a community and, and telling people, look, there is um, the light at the end of the tunnel, you know, so do not give up hope. And we all, uh, no matter if you're a celebrity, if you're rich, if you're XYZ, disease does not pick and choose yeah. you know it's there for everybody we just hit the common ground and uh, just you know just f find a space where you can tell your st story and you find people who are empathetic yes. who are compassionate and uh, yeah I think that's a very valid point you make that you know disease does not discriminate you know, no. you're absolutely right no. and I think for anyone when they're going through that it can have such a huge impact on, on the individual but also extended family members as you've just mentioned there and if I could bring you back into this conversation Fatima as Manisha's talking a lot about you know the importance it was for her to come back to London to support the paper in you 
that must be quite humbling. I know you have so many fans and so many people who really have wanted to see you back on this journey after your ill health, which has been very well documented. What has that been like for you? How important was it for you to have Manisha at the launch at the Houses of Parliament as well? What can I say about this woman? She's absolutely amazing, wonderful human being. You know, you like, you know, we, we meet a lot of stars. We yes. meet a lot of um, personalities. And um, especially when you're in showbiz, you meet characters sure. rather than people. Yeah. The first time I met a human being, <laughs> sometimes oh, she's so real. Humble. You're tangible. She's we so can touch real. You, Honestly, she is so real. She is so humble. Actually, I tweeted about it yesterday because yeah. I wanted everybody to know. Yeah. You know, like other. Obviously, it's it's in our industry. And we have to do that. Sure. You know about PRing yourself, putting yourself out there. This woman is just so down to earth. Uh, so can I humble. ask you she that? She doesn't do any of that. That's a really good I, point, actually, Manisha, yeah. that, that Fatima's making here. Because obviously, if it, and look, for film fans like myself, you are the epitome, a, a goddess of film, mm. if you will. But when you're in India, mm. you know, or in Nepal, you're treated as such. Mm. Legions of fans are not going to even let you, you know, mm. allow you to walk into the studio the mm. way you have today. Mm. How is that for you, comparatively? Is it nice to be able to be in a city like London where you can relax a little bit? You Absol don't have to worry about that. Absolutely. I think, I, you know, it's a good thing to just let you know, be and, and not really worry about, you know, people watching you every step. Yes. But, you know, over the period of the time, um, it's a form of affection, so I really don't mind it. Okay. You know, I'm okay with... with a lot of people get... it. Um, you know, they feel uh, their privacy has been encroached, but I feel it's the affection. Yeah. And and uh, I'm more than happy with, you know, so. And, and thank goodness for that. I'm glad to hear it. I, I, just <laughs> finally, I want to talk to both of you because you're both leading women in your own industries. Mm -hmm. What What is that like for you? Um, uh, you know, when you are seeing a leading woman such as Fatima, who's, you know, not an assistant. No, she's a CEO. She's the founder, the editor. And when it comes to Asian um, Standard London, is that something that you, you, you are perhaps enamoured by when you see South Asian diaspora, you know, communities in, for example, the UK like Fatima, mm -hmm. and they're leading in their field. I just wonder what your take is. I think that's incredible. I love, first of all, I, I, I love women uh, leading in their profession and doing best in, in the world. And, and, but to know you know, to be a South Asian and yet thrive in, in a country yes. where you've been definitely born and brought up, mm. but your parents probably have come from different country. Sure. And yet you, you've owned that space for yourself. You've created that space for so I'm hugely enamored by Fatima. Yeah. She's a huge, and on top of it all, and she's not only successful, she's intelligent, successful, and very mm. compassionate. Because when she picked up the people that she, who um, who were there, all uh, all of them were handpicked, or so I thought, mm -hmm. the people by by Fatima because of their stories, mm. you know, their struggle, their uh, overcoming the struggle, and also having a beautiful soul. Yeah. You know, and not getting dampened by the struggles of life. Well, that's, I think, a vital, important point, isn't it? That's why people love following your journeys. You mentioned your book, Healed, and, and, and Fatima, just finally, with regards to Asian Standard London, is that what you echo in terms of what Manisha's talking about, those stories? But also, is it important for you to be, you know, um, a female in an industry, which we know oftentimes, even in mainstream, is very male orientated? Mm. Um, and, and will we be able to hear more of that voice? I wonder in the paper. Absolutely, I think I think women generally, when we do something, the presentation, the voice, and the way we see things is always slightly different. Yeah. Um, and you're right when you say about uh, women in our industry. I mean, most we've got so many female journalists, thank goodness. But how many female owners of media do we have? We don't have many female owners yeah. of media. And I really want that to change as well. Sure. Um, because it's just like understanding your journalists as well, because journalism is really difficult yeah. sometimes. I mean, you'll know that. Sure. Um, you're out on a story and sometimes the story takes a turn. Absolutely. And you still have to go after it. Yeah. But then at home, you'll be thinking, oh, my kids, my this, my that. <laughs> Family, you know, wedding. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, so yeah. you need, you need, I think women owners then can actually have a bit more of an understanding sure. take on that yeah. and have backup plans to support their female journalists. So I think um, 
in media ownership, uh, media female media owners is something that we really need to push forward for well, now. The good news is Asian uh, Standard London has launched. It'll be lovely to get you back maybe in a couple of months to find out how the paper is going. Um, and um, a real pleasure having you here, Manisha. Thank you for taking the time out to come into BBC Radio London. And it's been a pleasure meeting you. Most welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Manisha. And thank you, Fatima. Thank you very much, Shay.